M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch versus M3 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch editing in DaVinci Resolve Studio. Which one's better? Is the M3 Max worth the extra cash? Is the M1 Max just as good as the M3 Max? Let's find out. I'm not gonna give you bar graphs of data. I'm just gonna give you real world scenarios of me editing in the software. Does it lag or does it not lag? That's really all we wanna know. Here are the timestamps in case you wanna skip Specifications for the equipment I use for the testing, I use the baseline of both MacBook Pros, so 32 gigs of RAM and then one terabyte of storage. I shot the footage with an A6600 Sony camera with an H.264 codec. I tested editing directly from the storage that was built into the computer, but then also tested with an external drive that had a T700 in it and both of them did exactly the same. I couldn't tell a speed difference, so that was cool. I edited using Resolve Studio because supposedly H.264 files are decoded better in the studio version rather than the free version, so keep that in mind. All right, so here we are on the M3 Max editing my Ben 10 theme song. Go check that video out if you're interested in that. But just take note that we're not caching any frames and there's no proxies made for this edit, so here we go. I'm in the color panel and I'm just going to add some different layers of color grading, you know, make myself look amazing, <laughs> change some colors here and there. We already had it color graded on the one panel. So, you know, just adding some different nodes to see how it performs, changing some things up here. So we got three and we play it back and it's great. It's a perfect flawless playback. No issues on a full-on color grade. It's awesome. Okay, now we're adding some glow effect to the color graded footage to see how that does. Looks really nice. No problems there. It's flawless. Perfect playback. We'll add a random lens flare. Why not? Random lens flare. Plays back great. Add some lens reflections. That's kind of a tougher effect. Slow down a little bit there. But all in all, it was still still pretty good. And then we add an extra set of light rays. How's that do? Well, that's where it starts to slow down. So that's about the limit of the system. Pretty good, I would say. It's it's about 90% of what I wanted. 90% of what I what I want, I think. Take off the other effects. The light rays works fine. Pretty good result. Now let's add the beauty effect and see what happens there. Really tough effect, so completely slowed down on the beauty effect. It's a no-go on that. Digital effect. I consider that the boss level of effects. So if you have a system that could run this back flawlessly, leave that in the comments. I want to know what you're using to play that back without cash. So it didn't work, so now I'm showing that if you turn on the cache, then you can cache back the frames uh, for something like a digital glitch, and it plays back great. So actually not terrible of an issue there. Yeah, plays back great after caching, so that's nice. Now we're going to try some transitions, try a little bit of a cross dissolve, butter, super smooth. Perfect. Couldn't get any better than that. And as a reminder, this is still color graded footage, so that's nice to be able to do. And a diamond iris. Ooh, very sleek. Scroll down. We'll try this block glitch. A little bit heavier of a of an effect. Okay, so it's slowing down on this a little bit. So you might need to cash back something on on the the block glitch. Interesting. Okay, so that was, that was a little bit slow. Not not perfect by any means on that. Let's try the camera shake. Starting slow. Okay, let's see how it does. Okay. Camera shake, I'd say, is successful. No problems there. All right, that's awesome. Okay, now we're just going to try playing 
you know, three clips at once at different scales just to see how that does. And it's flawless. Plays perfectly. Wow. Okay, that's pretty awesome. All in all, I'm very happy with how the M3 Max performed for my edits. It did basically 90% of what I wanted it to do. And the last 10% that it lagged on, you could just cash back and then it, it played flawlessly. So I was very happy. Okay, so moment of truth. We're on the M1 Max now in the color panel again. Same color grade. Gonna change up some nodes here and <laughs> make myself look great and add another node here all right we got perfect playback smooth as butter three nodes all color graded it's great all right now we're gonna add a camera shake to this one and see how it plays great plays back perfect no problem gonna add in that glow again flawless playback once again lens flare Random lens flare, let's do it. Still perfect. Let's keep stacking stuff up. A little bit of a like there, hmm, interesting. Lens reflections, the heavier one. Let's see how that does. Pretty good, actually. Wow, look at that go. That's actually pretty good. Starting to slow down a little bit in areas. About the same as the M3 Max, I would say. Switch off the reflections, try the light rays. Great. It works great. Smooth. All right, let's try this other test again where we do the three color graded footage played back all in different layers. And it's great. No difference than the M3 Max. So same amount of performance there. Let's try an arrow iris transition. Smooth, no problems there, great. This is interesting. Try uh, radial wipe. Perfect. No issues there either. Let's try something heavier. Let's try the block glitch. Now, this struggled on the M3 Max. Let's see how... Oh, that was actually pretty good. Wow. Okay, lagging there a little. Dare I say the block glitch is... almost better on the M1 Max. Weird. Very close, though. Let's try the camera shake. There we go. The M3 Max did the camera shake fine, and so does the M1 Max. Equal. Interesting. All right. Let's try the super heavy glitch effect for the transition, the transition version. Struggles. Let's try caching it and see if it plays back smoothly. It should. Okay, perfect. It's seeming like both computers are performing great, but then slowing down on pretty much the same areas of effects. Okay, now for the boss level of effects, we got the digital glitch. Let's see how it does. And it's slow, of course, it's slow. But we cash it back and it works fine. So again, same performance as the M3 Max, I would say. All right, awesome. Here's an ultimate test, just side by side to see how they do with my edit. And there you go. M3 Max gets a little bit ahead and then it's even. You can see just how close they are in terms of playback. It's almost frame by frame. Sometimes one will get slightly ahead of the other one. But, okay, so the M3 Max there. A little bit ahead of the M1 Max on that effect. But then, you know, back to normal. The difference is... So small, I feel like. All right, well, there you go. Here is some bonus editing footage of me in After Effects, actually, doing some animation for my Star Wars fan film. 
uh, subscribe if you want to see that when it comes out. But I just wanted to show that the animation, it caches pretty fast, actually, compared to my experience with other computers. So I was very happy with uh, the performance in After Effects, for sure. And then here's a clip of me using Logic flawlessly on both computers, actually. 79 layers, no problem. For those of you interested in the battery comparisons, I did an hour-long test just playing back the same edit on both laptops over and over again for an hour, starting at 100% battery, and then at the end, see what they got to. Interestingly, the M1 Max actually edged ahead of the M3 in terms of playback speed during this test. Very little, but for some reason it did a little bit. I'm not sure why, but that was interesting. But in the end, with the battery, the M3 ended with 56%, and then the M1 ended with a 55%. So, almost exactly the same. For a test for the file transfer speed, I transferred 135 gigs of footage from my external drive to my laptop drive on both laptops. And it did 135 gigs in 45 seconds. The M1 Max was like two seconds slower, but wow, that's really fast. It averaged about 2.85 gigabytes per second for the M3 and then 2.79 for the M1. Both really good. The difference was very minuscule. For the SD card reader speed on the side of the laptops, which was really nice to have for both of them, um, it was obviously a lot slower than the Thunderbolt, but they both ran at about 100 megabytes per second in transfer speed, which was pretty good. I was happy with that. They were both about the same. As far as price comparison goes, I bought both used from Best Buy. The M1 Max was $2,376. And the M3 was $3,262. That's $886 in savings for the same performance, essentially. Little anecdote from my Best Buy purchasing experience. I originally purchased an M2 Max used laptop from their website, but they sent me on accidentally, I presume, a little MacBook Air instead. So I had to take that back and exchange it for an M3 Max because it turned out they actually didn't have any M2 Max in the store that I went to or online. So I came home with an M3 Max. I also purchased the M1 Max to compare them. The M1 Max came with like a janky off-brand charger for some reason. I guess the previous owner, that's what they had. So I actually took that back to Best Buy and asked them if I could have an, a an Apple charger, and they gave it to me for free. So that was really nice of them. They were very cooperative for the whole process. And yeah, that was great. As far as cosmetic color differences go, the black is really cool. It's amazing. It looks great. It's sleek, but it also smudges really easily. So I found myself like not wanting to hold it as much as possible, trying to like hold it by the edges or not move it as much because I didn't want to like ruin its beauty, which is kind of annoying. It was really annoying to feel that way. So then I also thought, well, maybe it'll make me clean it more often. Maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. Just preference really in the end is all it is. Um, I guess I like the black better, but in practicality, I like the silver better. So it's a trade-off. Ending conclusion is they perform the same. They're the same. They video edit the same. They're basically the same computer in video editing. Based on these tests, I can probably just assume that the M2 Max is also the same. I loved the feeling of having the newer thing. It just feels better. It's super tempting. That black sheen color just tempting me into spending that extra $900. Every ounce of my being was craving the new thing. Ever since I laid eyes on it, I wanted it. It quite frankly broke my heart a little bit sending back the M3, but I did. I managed to do it, and I now have $900 saved that I can use to upgrade my now outdated PC. Video on that, maybe?